Okay, we're going to be measuring amps today. Okay, so we're going to push the amps button and we're measuring microamps. And it's measuring a little bit there so we can do a zero check. We can do, push the zero button and it says, I got this zero. And so that's good. Turn off zero check. And um, we are going to be putting things inside my little test fixture here. So one of the things that I think everybody's heard about is that LEDs can be used as photodiodes. And so let's put an LED in the test fixture. Um, so I don't think this will come as a surprise to many. Let's see. Let's backwards. I like that forward current. Let's have forward current. Okay. And so let's measure nanoamp. So there we go, nanoamp. So we're measuring about uh, one nanoamp to the minus nine. If I get my flashlight out, oh, there we go, 100 nanoamps, right? So we can get, we can get um, a lot of uh, photo current out of, out of uh, using a, uh, a photo, a, 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 a LED instead of a, a photodiode. Photodiode is much, much more, much more um, uh, efficient than the LED is, but the LED works both ways. You put in electrons and photons come out. You put in photons, electrons come out, right? And uh, so put the lid on it and, you know, goes back, it goes back to zero again, right? So, okay. So the point of this video, though, is to show you something that I hope is a surprise because um, I don't think a lot of people really realize it. Have you ever wondered why electronics always comes in black packages, right? All the ICs are black and all the transistors are black. Why are they all black? Is there a reason that they're all black or is that just like the cheapest material? You just put a whole bunch together and just kind of ends up being black? No, they're black for a reason. So th this is a transistor. It is a 2N2222A, a very old transistor, 2222A. And uh, the reason that I chose this transistor, it's in a metal can. And if I have it in a metal can, that means I can go over to the grinding wheel and I can grind the top off of the can and I can let in light now. Okay, so light can come into the transistor. And I'm gonna be taking a look at the base collector, no, base emitter. I'm looking at the base emitter junction. Okay, and so I'm putting one wire on the, I'm putting the, uh, uh, emitter onto the ground wire and the base is on the, uh, on the plus wire and we're measuring 1.3 nanoamps. Okay. If I put the lid on it and zero, it is photo. It is photo current. Okay. And if I bring over my, my trusty uh, flashlight, look at that overflow. We can get one and a half to well, another overflow. We can get uh, 2.7 microamps, microamps, okay? And it's silicon, right? There's no magic here, it's silicon. So yeah, so every single transistor has to be in the dark, has to be in the dark. They don't work if they're not in the dark. They don't work well, <laughs> unless you want them to. Uh... So every single transistor is kind of like a phototransistor. You wonder how those, uh, Optocouplers work, right? There's an LED on one side and a phototransistor on the other side. Well, any, any transistor works that way. Um, and they work better with uh, infrared light. So this is visible light, this flashlight is visible light. If I had infrared light, it would work even more efficiently. Um, the band gap of silicon is up around, what, 1.3 microns or something like that, I forget. Uh, but um, yeah, there you go. Uh, 2N222. Uh, and we're getting, yeah, a lot of microamps out of it. Even with room light, we're getting one nanoamp. There you go. Fact for the day.